god, I have highlights for this one. Oh, there's a cold open, Vesti. That was your cold open. <laughs> I can tell. Oh, no. Goodreads, please save me. I'm sorry, the, the, I'm, I'm, I'm eating the nail polish fumes at this point, and they don't taste good. Can you tell me you're recording? Oh, yeah, we're recording. I'm just looking at my notes. So you got all the. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. There's your cold open. You're welcome. Now, the cold open is me freaking out because I have highlights. Oh. Uh, I have 35 highlights. Oh, no. I only saw like two of them, and I was concerned. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, welcome to the Fish and Flower podcast. I'm Flower, aka Rose, um, and my fun fact of the day is sometimes I peel the skin off my toes, and I just realized this. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> so, um, I get calluses on my feet really easily. It's just a thing that happens to me. Um, it was more common oh, when I wore heels all the time, but, um... Apparently, it's just a thing where I subconsciously just peel off the calluses. You talk about your feet too much. Why are you like this? Dude, you have not seen my messed up feet. <laughs> I've seen your feet because you just send feet pics. You just send pictures of your fucking feet. Yeah, but I didn't actually send you a picture of my messed up toe. I just sent you a picture of my toe wrapped I up. Saying that it's a bummy now. You know the one picture you sent me with Bella and you're standing with her? I've seen you. I've seen. Oh, I forgot you could see my feet in that. Well, you can apparently sell my feet pictures. Someone asked for them, so give my DMs. I don't think anyone, anybody would pay for those. You would have a zero out of five on Wiki Feet. I know, that's why I was laughing really hard with that guy. Slid into my DMs and was like, I will pay you for feet pics. I was like, you don't want them. At least I would have like a solid three. <laughs> this is a great for. <laughs> <laughs> This is um, very awkward. We need to keep all this in. Oh, I'm 100% keeping it. You can't stop me. I have all the power. Yeah, that's kind of scary sometimes. Because I just be saying shit. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, okay, you do your intro now that we go. <laughs> um, my name is Fish, aka Stingray. Um, and I'm having nail polish issues. Yeah. But, you know, I paint my nails, like you do, um, because what else do I do with my life, you know? And um, I would, I have ten blue nail polishes, right, 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 and I'm using blue. So I'm seeing Spirit Box literally tomorrow. We're filming the same day as the other one. What other fucking one was it? The Ice Planet Marguerite. Um, you already forgot? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you already blocked it all out. Just that these fucking blues are working, and I keep knocking my nails. It's fine. I'm not having a fucking break time because I have so much to do before tomorrow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, it's hot. I'm not putting on my AC for your benefit. Thank you. My dishwasher's going on in the background, so, you know, it doesn't You know what my AC sounds like, okay? <laughs> um, this is very much a stream of cautious podcast, if you couldn't already tell. Nope. <laughs> um, I wasn't joking about you having it. I would have died if I had a three out of five on the TV. A three is better, Mom. This is um, similar to how we talk to each other on a daily basis. On today's episode, we're talking about A Soul to Keep, a book that I apparently have 35 highlights for, Kill Me, um, which one of us read all the way through and has extensive notes. I will ask you how many pages of notes you think I have, but I can't remember if you DNF'd it or just didn't read it, but what the thing happened? I got to chapter four. Oh, you so far. That was, that was uh, still when I liked it. So, um... Yeah, I liked it. I written the list Bestie. From what I know, from what I understand, the little things you told me, I feel like I might have liked it if I would have read it. Do it some little information. I'll let you know at the end of this because I feel like I would have liked it. <laughs> I rated it two stars. Yeah. That's unfortunate. I like that. That's unfortunate. Also, it took me six days to read it. Um... It's not bad. Mm-hmm. I mean, for you. But, like, you know. Yeah. 
Um, not as bad as the Guinevere deception. <laughs> did I DNF when I did that for the show? Yeah, you DNF it. That's why I keep on telling you things that are happening in the second book, because you were like, give me the information when I read the first one all the way through. And I was like, cool, do you still want the information? And you were like, sure. Or at least I think that's what you said sure to. I don't know, because I'm like 30 minutes ahead of you, because you don't have internet. So... <laughs> Uh, so I've just low-key mentioned stuff, like, um, the way that romance, and also, I think Guinevere may be the Lady of the Lake's daughter. Yeah, every time you talk about it, it just went right over my fucking head, so, you know. Yeah, good time. What the fuck is she talking about? What book is she talking about? <laughs> like, I uh, it doesn't help that I'm reading three Arthur A. Retellings right now. So, like, I could just say Lancelot, and it could be any of the three that I'm talking about. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, the so one with the one about the lady who's, like, the reincarnation of the one lady who put herself because you didn't love her or whatever? So real. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Half Sick of Shadows. Yeah, I might read that. I'm not gonna lie. I think you'd <laughs> like it. I talked about it in my uh, vlog, but, like, you can't watch that, so. What the fuck, oh? <laughs> <laughs> um, if you can't tell, Singray doesn't have internet, proper internet right now, so it's, yeah. Um, which is fine, because, of course, every episode that we could record right now are all very Rose-centric episodes where I do all the talking. Speaking of that, how many pages of notes do you think I have? Okay, should I shoot low or high? High? More or less. More or less just, than what? Just, just answer. Based on what I'm more. Eight. No, it's seven. <laughs> I was gonna say seven! When I was thinking you said more, I was like, maybe I should say eight. No, well, I was well, right. Here's the reason why. It's the same exact pages of notes as um the Second Ice Planet one. But, over a thousand more words, because that one was bullet points. This one is like literal paragraphs of text. Like, Girl. I'll take a picture and send it to you, and then we'll wait half an hour for it to send to you. Oh, it'll send it up here. I have a black fucking box. It's okay. It doesn't matter if you get spoilers from this picture, because by the time it sends to you, I will have told you everything. <laughs> yep. <laughs> by the time you get this, that fucking Snapchat will finally load. So, um, yeah. So, to keep a book that I planned for us to read, what, months and months ago? And, um, you DNF'd and I read and didn't enjoy. I did enjoy the beginning part, which is hilarious, because I edited one of the episodes that we recorded in that day where we recorded three episodes, right? Um, and I talked about it briefly in that, and how I was enjoying it, and now I'm just, and I was editing that, I was like, if only she knew, if only she knew. Um, but yeah, this is a book that I keep on getting videos and recommending about it, um, on Bookstagram, and every time, I'm just like, I get why you, you think it will be a great book from the intro alone or the premise alone because it's the like, same it's the but like uh, am i right though i do have to pull up a photo on my phone because i have to uh quote exactly the very opening page of this book um the dedication um was and i quote to all the monster fuckers out there this book is for you don't pretend that you've never wanted to be railed by some human eating dark entity that has a skull for a face you saw the cover you knew what you were getting yourself into and you still chose to open this book and read it hear me out i've never wanted to be railed by any of the things listed in that dedication <laughs> but maybe i'm just gay you know, and those are predominantly male presenting things. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, oh god, I just, I'm getting flashbacks. So it's like been a whole month since I've read this, right? I'm getting flashbacks about the dick in this book. Yeah, I'm, I need to know because, uh, I know what the the hell? You're like, it's not normal. <laughs> There's tentacles. <laughs> Oh my god. Anyways, I'm just going to start it. Um, So there's a prologue. Um, In the prologue, it low-key sets up some lore for the book where demons are a thing and evil, but duskwalkers are worse. Um, And they initially look human, but are seven feet tall. Uh, at which point I did say, I do love a tall man. Um, And have antelope horns and a bone face. Um, 
So when one shows up with its pet wolves, that means it's been 10 years since it's left the veil and looking for a bargain, and that's why Rhea, the main character, was sacrificed. Um, I'll, I'll describe it in a minute because it goes into it, um, how everything works, but basically, Duskwalkers are part demon, technically? Demon-adjacent creatures that have more of a conscience than normal demons, um, because of the way that the feeding works, basically, uh, the more of what you eat is more what you turn into. So if there's like a spider demon, it ate a lot of spiders in the beginning. Um, so in order for a Duskwalker to become to the point where this one is, it has to have eaten a lot of humans. Um, but also, the Vale is where the demons live, and so do Duskwalkers. The Duskwalkers can walk during the day. That's why they're called Duskwalkers. Cough, cough, demons can't. Um, and I think that's all the background lore we really need. Um, so every 10 years... A dusk walker comes to the town to find a new spouse. Um, it's the same one every year as uh, is this dusk walker. Um, there are other books that follow different ones. The one for the second book and the third book are both mentioned in this one actually. Uh, but I don't care. I looked at the synopsis and I was like, I don't care. I don't want to continue. Um, so he comes to town to find a new Wait, spouse. Wait, what? Wait, what? Yeah. Did, 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 uh, no, I'm confused. So, like, honestly, so much of the lore that I got from the four chapters there kind of went over my head. But you said what the other sacrifices are the ones that are, like, for later on. Is, are, they're in the other book, right? Is that what you just said? Uh, there's other desk walkers in later books, yeah. In the second one, it's just a woman who falls yeah. into the veil, and he catches her. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I'm it's saying, not, like, this is, like, fun. I'll go into it about how the lore for this one and the spouse thing happens. Um... So basically, I feel like it would have been fun if they would have used the other sacrifice that they didn't get sacrificed yeah, as the right. ones in the other book. Like, oh, the gay one? Like, I want to know what's happened in there. The guy? I want to know how the... I want to I wanna know. It, does, I wanna it know. does go a little bit into what happened. But yeah, basically this dusk walker has this plan. He has a reasoning on why he does it. Every ten years he goes to the human world, goes to one of these three towns, and asks for a spouse, um, a woman to be... Not generally a woman. A person to be um, sacrificed to him as a spouse. Uh, and Rhea is forced into it on this year. Um, she has been mistreated by this village since her family's murder via demons when she was seven. Basically, uh, demons killed her whole family. Uh, they lived in, like, the woods. Uh, there's, like, two types of people. People who live in towns to be in a community with, like, very high walls um, uh, to stay safe from demons. And those who live in the woods in houses uh, solitary because uh, the thought that more humans in the area will attract more demons, right? type of thing. Um, so they lived in one of those areas, solitary. Um, her whole family, both parents and brother, were murdered by a demon. Um, when she was seven, she watched it happen, uh, but managed to get away and ran to the village. And then the villagers just assumed that she was a bad omen and evil. And uh, there's like a lot of stuff in this book in the very beginning about how they mistreat her. Um, no one talks to her, like literally ever. Um, in this whole entire town. She's not allowed to talk to anyone. She's not even t allowed to touch anyone. Um, she gets rocks thrown at her at one point. Um, all this stuff. When people, like, people are supposed to give her food so that she can eat. Like, she's not allowed to leave her house unless to get food at a certain time of day. And they're supposed to put it in a basket that she sets on the ground. They put the food in the basket and then she leaves. But they tend to just throw it at her um, instead. So, like, good time. Give me out. Give me out, bestie. Mm-hmm. If I was her, they were, uh, they're already, like, paranoid about her, right, right, right? But if she were, if I were her, they would not like me. They would be scared of me. Hear me out, because... Yeah, they're scared of her, yeah. But she doesn't do anything I mean, to make them scared. Yeah, like, no, I mean, they would have a reason to be mm -hmm. scared of me if I was her. You know, because, like, if you're going to throw my fucking foot on the ground, be so serious, bestie. You're going to, yeah. like, not speak to me? Be so serious. Um, also, sometimes they just randomly throw her into the dungeon. Because they can. Um, so, every ten years, uh, the Duskwalker comes to get a new spouse. Um, they call it a new bride, but it can be any gender, right? Um, and in payment, he puts up a protective ward around the town, uh, to protect the town from demons, right? Uh, that's how it works. Uh, and he, they, like, they've seen him coming. Uh, it's always one of the three towns. They see him coming towards their town. So there's, like, these priestesses who come and, like, dress her up in this white gown and dress her up in all this stuff. Uh, like a flower crown, nice shoes, all this stuff. That's, like, not as nice as the other girls. Like, if you, 
at one point she like when she's at his house she goes through all the clothes of the other girls and she can see them that like hers was like very blanding compared to the other ones um but basically they come to dress her up and sacrifice her because they can't kill her in their eyes because she's a bad omen so if they kill her um then it will make demons attack them because she's evil but by sacrificing her it gets rid of her without actually killing her even though they don't know what's going to happen to her um yeah. One, they said bad omens so many times, and I've been obsessed with bad omens. At least every time they said it, I would just, you know, the eye twitching gif I send all the time? That was, that was just me the whole time, because they just said bad omens. Like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But also, uh, I'm gonna hang up on you and call you back, because it keeps, like, cutting out a lot. Okay? So, give me some second. You know? Oh, okay. Okay, so um, Stingray hung up on me, so I guess I guess it's time to talk shit about Stingray. I say Stingray's literally calling me back right now. But, like, we could totally talk shit about Stingray. It'd be fine to talk about Stingray right now. It'd be totally fine to talk shit about Stingray right now. Now that Stingray hung up on me. Hello? Also, the Snapchat loaded. It was strawberry. I love that for you. Um, I love how we also learned that I'm the one that has to make the call. So, good times. Um. Honestly, the strawberries were very important. Not gonna lie. Okay, go. <laughs> okay, go. Um, so, basically, um, there's, like, a thing where to be sacrificed, you have to willingly be a participant, um, right? Um, but, uh, she's being forced into it, so she questions since they're technically forcing her to do this, uh, or spend the rest of her life in a dungeon, if that will mess up the sacrifice, but the priestess says it so counts. Um, she's 26, and, like, rightfully livid, uh, about everything that's happening, um, but her reactions to things, like, she'll be really angry about something, right? So she'll stop her foot, but the way it's described is, like, giving me a teenager or 18 years old max, but she's 26. Um, so, uh, the Well, you need to think about the fact she's basically had no socialization, et cetera, et cetera. So how does she have any social skills whatsoever? Sure. No social how, how does she take care of herself, et cetera? So, I mean, I don't she, think it was that far. I think it was just a, a, a writing decision that I, like, just the way that it was written, and I didn't like it. Um, it wasn't, like, that deep of a decision. Um, anyway, they're dressing her up for the wedding. And the priestess says she'll be safe, but Rhea questions if it's really safe since the Duskwalker takes a new spouse every ten years, at which the priestess lists off all the ways the Duskwalker could kill her, but says Rhea shouldn't be selfish. At which point I want to scream. Um, uh, uh, they tie her to the Duskwalker. She notices he doesn't smell like decay, like normal demons. Oh, we got a first highlight. What is it? I gotta open it up. Um, oh, what he smells like. Surprisingly, he smelled of smoking mahogany wood and dot 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 pine. Why is the dot 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 necessary? Why would that sound so, like, I know. <laughs> yeah. I have an important question. You want to record a third episode after this? Absolutely fucking not. <laughs> I knew that'd be your reaction. That's 100% why I asked. <laughs> Um, so, uh, he asks her name, but she doesn't respond since the villagers never let her speak, um, right? So, like, while they were, like, walking her, quote-unquote, down the aisle, uh, to do this, um, like, she went to say something to the chief, and the chief was like, no, you're not allowed to say anything, you demon, blah, 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 um, and so the Duskwalker asks her a question, and she doesn't answer because she's told not to speak, and so the chief is like, bitch, speak! Um, and gets really angry at her for not responding, and, uh, the Duskwalker, because she didn't respond, grabs onto her neck, uh, in parentheses, but only lightly, and then she says her name, uh, which is Rhea, of course, and then it switches POV, um, his name is Orpheus, he's put mud in his nose so he can't smell the villager's fear, and then no, 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 but, like, I loved his POV, I wanted more of it, but I didn't enough of it. Uh, it was kind of the best part? I don't know. Um, basically, demons and similarly duskwalkers track humans and eat them by scent of fear. Um, it's like this whole thing where Rhea doesn't smell like fear. Um, 
very rarely does, and that is why a bunch of stuff is a thing um, in this book. Blah, 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 blah. Um, also, it's like a whole thing that they, I didn't mention it in this part, I think, but I bring it up in, after, like, in the next section, uh, where they bathed her in a bunch of uh, floral central stuff, so to hide her, the scent of her fear as well. Um, and all this, um, and it's low-key important for later, okay? Um, he finds Rhea attractive, and with his hand on her neck, he can smell her, but instead of the fear he was expecting, the smell, he smells anger and notices her glaring at him. Um, yeah, he can still, like, smell her low-key, uh, like, if you're, he's, like, right up close to someone, he can still smell their fear, and, uh, even with all the bathing stuff, and, um, he, he doesn't smell the fear. She's just angry because she's being forced into this situation. Understandable. Um, there are two backup sacrifices, and one of them is male, which is surprising. Um, I was expecting Orpheus to learn Rhea is more afraid of the villagers than him at beginning of romance, and would not be angry if he kills all the villagers for this. Um, he lands it around 50% of the way through, and near the end, he literally is like, hey, I could cold kill them, and she's like, if you want, I want mine, just saying. <laughs> um, and I was like, hell yeah. Um. Uh, Oh, this sacrificing and dressing her up in white was giving her my book vibes, like giving me vibes of my book, you know, good times. Um, Ten minutes. Um, yeah. I, can't, um, I think I genuinely, I genuinely think the nail polish is getting to me at this point, MG. That's okay, you can be high for this episode. I think I've been this entire. I I I need help. <laughs> all. Um, even the male sacrifices are dressed up in white dresses and called brides. Uh, the sheep offers the other two possibilities. Uh, with Orpheus's neck on her hand, he the chief assumes that he doesn't want her. Um, and offers like two others just in case. Um, uh, which is like not a normally done thing. So Orpheus finds it weird. Uh. And he doesn't want the mail because that's what he had last time, uh, and they tend to expire soon because they always try to kill him, so he ends up killing them. Um, like, they try to kill him, and so he gets angry, and his beast mode comes out, and he attacks them, and then he, he, he kills them. Right? Um, and he finds it weird that there's multiple sacrifices that he could choose from. Uh, the other girl initially seems into it until he gets closer, and she can see his full stature, uh, and then she gets scared. Um, and he almost goes for her, despite the fact that she's scared, but Rhea and her lack of fear intrigues him, uh, especially since she deflected when he asked if she's there willingly. Um, yeah, he, like, literally asked her with his hand around her neck, hey, you choose this, don't you? And she's like, in a way. <laughs> um, uh, the chief is surprised that he would go for Rhea. So he texts her out again to see what's wrong with her, but sees nothing, um, and hinted that the attack that led to Rhea's family's death may have to do with, uh, the ten-year wards and how the demons react to them. Um, oh yeah, so the way that the demons react to the wards, uh, they go off and kill anyone they can find, and happen to be the closest people they could find was her family. So technically, it was the villagers' fault and not hers, but she's a bad woman, blah, 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 right? Um, he takes Rhea's hand and uses her blood to make the ward, and then they leave the village gates um his internal monologue mentions that he just wanted to find a companion uh and he only eats human once every 10 years uh and it's tiring him out um it's assumed that the human he eats every 10 years usually the human he is sacrificed uh at this point i noticed that it was written kind of weird um like it's written third person but we still get the character's thoughts and how i'm questioning if i wrote my book <laughs> Oh yeah, I started to question if I wrote my book like that. I was like, did I do it like this? Is that like I don't like it like this? But now I'm worried that I'm doing it like this. And blah, blah, blah. Um, no, it kind of like the because of the writing style and the way uh, the like the POV. It kind of terrifies me of your book. Oh no. <laughs> I think yeah, the first chapters yeah very similar to that. But once um it starts actually getting into character POVs more, it switches. Um, you'll see. If you ever had internet, you could see. Um. Uh, so I still have the last one you sent me. I haven't read it yet. There's so much more since then. They touched tan since then, so you know. 
You can send it to me. It'll appear, and it, but it'll ta- it, it'll take it'll happen eventually. It'll show up eventually. You know. <laughs> show up eventually. Um, they leave the village. Uh, so because he's super tall, he's much faster than her. So she keeps on falling in the snow. Uh, because of the shoes and the dress. Um, she, he recognized that she was coerced in sacrificing herself, and he feels bad, but he's already used her blood for the war, so it can't be taken back. Um. So, she has nothing with her. They gave her food and stuff for the journey, uh, but they left the bag of the food and stuff in her house. They gave her, like, a house on the edge of the town and all this to stay away from everyone. Um, they left it in her house, and then he didn't let her go back to say bye to anyone, not that she had anyone to say bye to, and get her stuff. So, she has nothing on her, um, and she's in a flimsy white dress and heels and a flower crown, and that's it. And it's snow. Um... And it's a four-day journey. So, uh, she's hoping he'll feed her. Um, she knows that she's slowing him down to the constant falling, so, uh, he ends up picking her up and carries her, which she appreciates. Uh, the way that he's carrying her is, like, if his he- arm is, like, he's going to flex his muscles, and she's sitting on the uh, on his arm, uh, and he has his hand wrapped around her body to keep her there. And the way his hand um, placement is, it's right under her underboob. Like, basically, he's touching the underboob, and I felt like that was very important to bring up. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because, no, why is he carrying her like that? I don't know, and it happens multiple times. Why was that the default for him? Like, I know, right? Um, she finds him warm and likes his voice, at which point I have another highlight. Uh, he may look monstrous, but at least his deep voice is nice. She couldn't help liking the way his voice sounded gruff, rough, dark, and hinting with warmth. And then there is the way he smells. Even now, she could smell that smoky mahogany and pine aroma from him. Cool, thanks. Um, <laughs> um, she asks if she's heavy, and if he plans to carry her for long, at which point he replies that he's strong enough to rip her apart with ease. Um, which, she asked if that's meant to scare her, and he says that he was only trying to tell her the truth, uh, and she realizes he can smell fear. It's like this kind of this whole thing where he doesn't understand sarcasm or lying or any of that stuff, because he wasn't raised in the human land. Um, so he, if you ask him a question, he'll just give you the answer straight out type of person, um, which is kind of nice, uh, because she is the type of person who is very similar, uh, similarly, hasn't had much human interaction, so it was, it's a similar way. And, um, just says what she thinks. And so, uh, there's not really any miscommunication about stuff, because, like, he just says what he's thinking, and she just says what he's think what she's thinking. So, it's nice like that. Um, the only time they really hide what they're thinking is if they're, like, feeling something for the other one. Yeah. Um, she says he didn't actually answer her, so he says that he meant that he's strong enough to carry her the whole way, and he didn't mean to frighten her. And this reassures her. Um, at this point, I was into it. Uh, and I couldn't wait for the devil monster to prove he treats her better than humans. <sighs> Which technically he does. So, you know. Uh, it switches to his POV again. He's carrying her bridal style now. Because um, she fell asleep. He's sad because so many have run away from him before, so he won't sleep until they reach the veil. Uh, just in case. She's sleeping in his arms. He's constantly making the effort to make uh, his claws come out. Uh, make sure his claws don't come out. Or use too much pressure and accidentally kill her. Um, he watches her sleep as the sun comes up and raptured by her beauty. This is where it really comes into the beauty of the beast retelling um, aspect. Uh, he thinks it's... I forget. Is it, is it really beauty of the beast retelling? I forgot. The, the yeah. Of my head. Why am yeah. I stupid? Why am I stupid? Yeah, I didn't really realize it until later on, but this is, it's like very obvious right at this point. Um, he thinks it's just because he finds humans pretty, not Rhea in particular. Um, there's a hint at some demon with super powerful magic who's dangerous and who will kill Rhea if she meets him. That is true. Um, when she says his name, it thrills him. Uh, yeah, so she wakes up and she's like Orpheus and he's like, say my name again. Uh, and she does, and he's, like, relishing in it. Uh, and then he's shot by two, min- two demon slayers. Um, 
So he sits um, Rhea down, because he's about to go into beast mode, and morphs into some type of beast, and attacks them. And then switches to her POV. You got thoughts I think he's so real for that, but, like, I don't know. Um, no, he's so real. I love him. I no, like, I love him. I have one hand done. Can you believe it? Oh, I believe you. Um, I'll make up one more coat on this other hand and then do the glitter and then I'll be fucking done. Can you fucking believe it? <laughs> I think I'm delirious. Maybe we'll finish this episode by then. Because we're already half an hour in and I'm not even two pages done. Fuck. I'm yeah. I'm like, what are y'all talking about? I'm going to be like, well. Um, demon sex, obviously. Um, Casual thing to talk about. <laughs> No, please don't. Oh my lord. Casual things to talk about your internet mother with on a, on a Thursday night, you know? Yeah. No, literally, my mom was walking by as I was talking about uh, dick stuff. Oh, the dildo, the creating of the dildo in Ice Planet 2. Um, my mom was walking by, and she most definitely heard it, and she just was like, okay, you're doing dishes, bye. <laughs> so, you know. We I feel like at this point, she's just like... You know what? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or is that charger breaking? Bestie, I'm not trying to send you another charger. No, like, there's a reinforcement area mm-hmm. on my charger. That's kind of gross. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, like, peeling off. Mm. So after that, that means the actual charger is going to break, right? <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. This is yeah, the charger well, that came with my phone, too. So it's like the actual fucking charger, so when that breaks, my life is going to be fucking miserable, and my phone's not going to charge fast. Yeah, my, computer and it's gonna charger, um, my computer chargers do that. I glue, super glue and tape and rubber bands uh, it so it doesn't break. Because it happens on those two. I wouldn't know. My laptop literally just disappeared into thin fucking air. Uh, it's in the walls somewhere. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it was somewhere that ridiculous at this point. <laughs> um, alright, back to the book. Back to the book. Uh, so, uh, we're at Rhea's POV. She feels, she felt euphoric over his reaction to her saying his name. Uh, and she felt sympathy when he was shot. Uh, one demon slayer fights him uh, to distract him, while the other one grabs her and uses her as bait. Um, literally putting a knife to her throat, and I think she gets, like, nicked and whatnot. Um, at which point, she's like, seriously, what the fuck? I got sold off, basically, by my village of humans to this man. And then she thinks she's being rescued, and then she's being threatened again as bait. And she's like, at this point... I might as well stay with him. I'm safer with him. Um, so, uh, the bait thing doesn't work. Uh, he kills the one that was supposed to distract him, right? And starts charging them. So she, she's scared that he's gonna, like, go through her to get to the demon slayer behind her. Um, so she elbows him, uh, so that, like, to make him, like, loosen his grip. So she can, like, duck out of the way and run away. Um, uh, so Orpheus does end up killing him. And then he chases after her, uh, so she stops running. Uh, she's like, well, he said at one point that if I run, he'll chase. So I'm just gonna stop running. Um, and is angry. Uh, there's apparently another highlight that I, oh, <sighs> okay. This is what she was angry about. Anger at the demons who killed her family, but spared her anger at the village who abandoned her as some form of curse, treated her cruelly and then forced her to be here or be locked in a cell. Anger at the demon slayers for causing this by trying to use her as bait against a monster that didn't care if she lived or died. She would be angry at Orpheus, but he couldn't help being a nightmare. He'd shown her more kindness in this, in his Duskwalker actions than any of the humans she'd known in the last 20 years. So, um, basically everything I said. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I'm having a good time listening, which is unusual. Um. <laughs> wow. Secondly, um, I'm just gonna say fuck it and just do the second, this last coat on my nails and then just put the glitter in. If they're messed up underneath, it's fine because there's gonna be glitter on top and you won't be able to see all the fingerprints, you know? Yeah. Um, so because she stops writing, he tackles her and starts licking her. Um, and it makes her laugh. 
Uh, which stops him from almost eating her, uh, his red eyes doing from anger. Oh, yeah. So the way the Duskwalkers are, they have, like, a skull, um, animal skull, and for their head, uh, their bodies are, like, half flesh, like, decaying flesh over bones and whatnot. Like, you can, like, see rib cages, uh, knuckle on the hand, stuff like that. Um, but the eyes are, like, orbs, like, literal orbs that change color based off of mood. His are naturally blue normally. Um, and red usually means anger slash beast mode, right? Um, so he starts to sniff her, and in another highlight, we get, uh, he says, you taste of elderberries, and really I love how you smell of it. <laughs> uh, no, you just casually say beast mode, I'm just like, I, like, no I, other way to say it. I know, but, like, it's, it's um, big on the door. So, so, uh, he starts licking and sniffing her. He doesn't... Me? Um, my mother's laughs. home? <laughs> Do, oh, no. <laughs> um, and it causes him to turn back to his more humanoid version, um, uh, at which point he continues to sniff and lick her, uh, saying he probably sh would have eaten her if it wasn't for eating parts of the demon slayers, uh, making it so he wasn't hungry, uh, well, making it so he was less hungry. Uh, she learned his intentions are not to eat her, uh, he's never stopped from eating someone before. Uh, he thinks it's a uh, mix of for a scent and the laughing. Um, oh, another highlight. A yelp squeezed from her when he licked across her chest and dipped into the low cleavage of her dress enough that his tongue only just missed her nipple. Explanation point. <sighs> uh, you should really put me on speakerphone for this. You are, you've been on speaker. My earbuds are dead. Hell yeah. I meant for your mom, but it's... No, I, I think she's in a mood, okay? Just... Um, he does it again, saying that that's where the scent slash taste is strongest, um, which, like, makes sense. That's where her heart is beating, right? Um, and she gets turned on from it. Already. Already. We're only 10% in. Um, and it says her thighs pressed together at the low, reverberating deep tone of his voice, her mind finding it even more appealing than before, with her body tingling in such a disconcerting way. Why did you feel the need to read that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It was a month ago. I don't remember anything. Um, he feels here. bad for everything that went down. Uh, and she's just trying not to... She, she's just trying to make herself believe that she isn't turned on. Um, he says that he'll take her home, and she's intrigued by him calling it their home. Um... Because she's never really had a home. He, she takes his hand, uh, to, like, stand. Um, he offers her his hand to, like, help her stand. And, yeah, when she does, he squeezes it to come for her. Uh, and she fully recognizes that he's been treating her better than any humans have. Um, he, she notices he's walking slower so she can keep up with him. Uh, when she says she was bait, he realizes he was protecting her. Oh, another highlight. What is this one? Oh, and I quote, your life is precious. I will try to make sure it does not end if I can. Why did I like that so much? Why was I into that a month ago? Um, I don't know, bestie. In the attack, he was cut and stabbed, and she feels bad recognizing she should be happy about this. Uh, because, like, he's injured and all this stuff, and he's a monster. But, like, she feels bad, uh, especially since, like, some of it was protecting her. So she tears up some of her dress. Um, she tears up a lot of dresses in this book uh, to bandage him up. And uh, the only note I have about this section is, I need help. So I was having a good time. No, because in so many books and stuff and movies, they're like, they tore their clothing. It's not that easy to tear clothing. Yeah. It's really not. So I... I don't understand. My favorite part is that, like, she's almost freezing to death already in the snow, and she, like, tears up more of her dress. And he does try to stop her. Um, because, and I quote, uh, well, and I quote, there's no quoting. Um, but, uh, it's, I think it's to his POV now. Um, he's surprised by the bandaging since he told her that the bleeding would stop by nightfall so he wouldn't attract demons like he was telling her so like she knew that he won't attract demons it's fine you don't have to worry about it um because that's the only reason she would be worried about it um uh but she's like still going at it and he's like okay um he doesn't want her to see his bare chest as it scares people away so they put it over his clothes 
Um, which like morph into him when he goes into face mode, in case you're wondering. Um, he has her walk beside him due to his bandage slash shot shoulder, so she quickly gets cold due to the snow, uh, and only having one shoe and ripping up half her dress. He carries her on his other arm to keep her warm. Um, oh, I have another highlight, which is apparently very important. Um, come little human, he gestures his hand out to present more of his left arm for her. Let me melt your heart. Okay, that was a pretty good one. I'll give you that. I'll give you that, me. Um, and it's surprised she let him touch her after everything with the demon slayers and almost eating her. Uh, he doesn't even know what a duskwalker is, like, how they're made, any of that stuff, because they're so different from any other type of demon and all this stuff. Uh, she learns she isn't his bride, technically, until she gives him something which scares every other human away, and she's upset she was forced to wear the wedding outfit. Uh, she gets confirmation that he's eaten some of the brides, which makes all demons more human. He tells her that since she didn't continue to run when the demon slayers attacked and waited for him, uh, helped keep her alive. Uh, and when learning all he wants is a companion, she recognizes they are both lonely people. Um, the way that I apparently screamed over that highlight, I don't know why. Uh... Apparently, at this point, I started typing up a summary every hundred-ish pages type thing is what I was doing. I don't know if I really did that, but, like, who knows. Um, they get to the veil. Uh, the whole time they're walking through the veil to his home, she needs to be completely in and hidden in his cloak so that no demons can send her. Um, so it makes the chances of escaping harder because she like, can't see where she's going and how to get to certain areas, blah, blah, blah. Um... He has to bathe her twice a day with a special oil using a basic spell to hide her scent from other demons. Can you give uh, me two seconds? Yes. All by myself. All by myself. Should, should we explain the part? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just going to explain it, that um, it is totally 100% the same day, except it's totally not, and I may end up eating food in the middle of recording this episode as well. It's fine. <laughs> Alright, um, I just realized I have to describe demon dick. If I'm huh? in the kitchen. I just realized I have to describe demon dick. Well... Well, you're, you're, this was your idea. Everything that's happening and that will happen is your idea. I know. Listen, the worst part of it is that my mom is in the other room, which means she'll be able to hear me describe this. But that's fine. She heard me talking about alien dick last week, so it's fine. I'm so glad it's not to read these books, you know? Uh, it's fine. Okay. Um, uh, we're just gonna, uh go back a little bit um into my notes because you probably don't remember the context of where i left off from so basically um there's this thing where so that she doesn't smell human so other demons don't come to come kill her right um he has to do this magical spell uh with oil and whatnot uh and bathing her like her whole entire body with okay. a special oil um and in order to, like he does it while wearing gloves um and so because of that it's not as powerful as a spell so he has to do it twice a day i did cut out for like five seconds i don't know what you said um he, he has to do it twice a day oh yeah oh twice a day okay <laughs> Yeah. With gloves. <laughs> when did this man get gloves? Did he just materialize a lot? I said, Ew, what's going on? What's I don't know. Going? I don't know. Um, oh, uh, but this is where I could tell you she slightly turned off. Like, are they labels? Are they claws? Like, there are, are claws. claws. And he, I... He's worried that she will. So I, I think I mentioned this a little bit where. um. Dusk walkers. I was trying to think of what they're called. Dusk walkers. Um, the way their bodies are is that like parts of like flesh uh, will be rotted away, and there will be like bones picking out. 
real. But like not in a gross way. Um, so like his knuckles are actually just his knuckle bones and he has actual claws and stuff like this. So he's afraid that yeah. if she sees his real hands and he touches them with her or her with them, uh, she will freak out and get scared and try to run away. Um, so he's doing it to hide himself from her. Yes, but it's okay, she's yes. turned on the whole time, so. Oh. <laughs> um, he brings her food from a garden he has cultivated, um, and she eats one strawberry despite not really eating uh, during the whole entire journey uh, there, and then goes to sleep instantly. Yes, I don't think you told me about that. Like, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. And- um, also, in the room that he gives to her, uh, she and there's there's a dresser, and uh, she finds all the white dresses of all the other sacrifices. Um, and so oh. she, yeah. Um, and there's very clearly one that was uh, like less adorned and whatnot, uh, more simple and whatnot, that has been turned into a nightgown by a different sacrifice. Um, oh, yeah, she, it, when she was eating food, she didn't eat any of the raspberries, so I got really angry, because the raspberries are great. <laughs> Which is funny, because at a later point, she mentions that the raspberries are her favorite, but she didn't eat any fucking raspberries. This one, hear me out, this flavor of raspberry is actually really nice. I just hate the texture of raspberries, so it's so sad. Because I want to be a raspberry girly, but I can physically cannot be a raspberry girly. I believe you. Um, I forgot his name was Orpheus until I just read that. <laughs> also, my food's almost ready, so I'm prepared to eat while I have to tell you this book. Oh my god. Uh, so he's making wards, uh, to keep the lower demons out. Um, there's like, like you bundle herbs with, like dried herbs with a piece of string or ribbon, uh, and also a bell, and that will keep lower demons out. I don't really know how it works, but yeah. Um, he Magic. does catch her contemplating going outside but stops her. He does take her outside, but then when he puts down a salt ring, uh, that if you ruin the salt uh, ring, it breaks the ward whatnot. I know how salt rings work, Vesti. I don't know. <laughs> like, what's supernatural? I watch other things. It's like basic salt and demon lore there, bestie. <laughs> Listen, nothing is actually explained. Things just happen, and you just have to accept it. Um, so he, he when they go out to the side to do this, he's like, "Listen, you can come with me as long as you stay right by my side in case something comes." Because like all the wards and protection spells aren't all up right now, right? Um, because like there's a thing with the herb ones where uh they can last up to a week. But since he's been gone so long to go get her, uh, the ones that he had up beforehand are, like, like had died. And so he had pre-made ones to hang up, but the fresher they are, the longer they last. So they're only going to last, like, a little bit. So, like, he's got to hang up new ones, all this stuff. Right? Um, but she decides to go stand in the sun uh, by where the garden is. There's, like, a clearing of trees. They're in a clearing of trees where he's built a house. Right? I'm ahead of myself, but that's fine. Um, and there's a little bit of sunlight that comes at the beginning of the day that lands perfectly perfectly on this garden that he's made for humans, for human food. Um, and so she's like, sunlight, and stands in the sunlight, which is a bad idea, because then a demon tries to attack her. Um, but then Orpheus just oh. bodies it easily, and just gets upset that she went off on her own, and she feels bad about it. Um, so he has her grab what she wants from the garden, um, and she starts making a vegetable soup. Uh, he watches as... He makes some of the dried herb wards. Like, he watches her cook. Um, She's low-key watching her make the wards, all this stuff. Um, no, I and love that. They're just, they're just doing little things and like this thing here. Yeah, I love that. There's no rule for that. I love that. <laughs> um, so, you know when you're making soup, you gotta, like, let it sit for a bit, right? Um, She decides, hey, I'm gonna help him make the wards. And she's like, listen, I wanna know how to make them, too. I don't wanna be, like, defenseless. I wanna be able to do stuff on my own, like... Uh, also, I want to be able to just do things, period, and apparently this, like, really touches his heart because no human has ever done that before, um, and then she eats her dinner next to him, which apparently no human has ever done before, um, where was I? He steals away the herb, oh yeah, so 
when after he teaches her how to make the herb work, right? Uh, she only makes like one, I think. Um, I just like a mediocre, okay one. Like it would work for a bit, but like it's not as good as his because he has more practice. Blah 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 blah. He literally steals it. He like makes a different one to replace it, but steals that one to hang up in his room, literally just because he wants to keep a token that she made. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. You can already tell this man is simping hard, which I love. You're so real. <laughs> I'm in a mood, okay? This he's so real. I love him. Um, so there's like you know those crown like things, but they're like circlets around your forehead, right? You know those things that like have gemstones usually and whatnot, right? Sure. You probably don't know what I'm talking about. He has one of those that's made out of iron and has a spell on it so that she, uh, if, like, a demon tries to grab her even from a head, like, from a top, um, even, like, a dangerous one, it will burn them a little bit. Um, so, you know, good times. Um, important. It will help protect her. And so there's, like, this whole scene where she's sitting in this chair. And all the, like, furniture is made for him. So, like, he's, like, seven feet tall. She's, like, five-something. So, like... She's, like, uh, literally just slouched in this chair because she's too small for it. And then he's, like, up against her putting this crown thing on her. And she's just there just, like, letting him do it. And he's, like, she's sitting still for me? How odd. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, at least, I don't know. Oh, also, another good. thing he does for her. So, she likes to eat in the sun uh, because she likes the sun. Yeah. It's only there in the morning, really. Uh, so, she'll usually eat her breakfast in the sun um, out by the garden. Uh, which is fine if, like, there's ward, there's the sand, or salt ward, um, and then there's herb wards, and then also he'll go outside with her and, like, be nearby in case anything comes by, right? Um, and so since she likes doing that, so she doesn't have to sit on the ground, he gets a tree stump and, like, cleans it out and all the stuff so that she can use that as a stool. And plans to make her an actual chair so that she can just, she has a chair to sit on outside. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is where I I don't this would just be made out of fun. And I didn't even read. Why is this demon uh doing more for her than any of my ex boyfriends have done for me? You know? For real. <laughs> Thank you. Um no, no, this really starts, real. like there's this there's like this kind of idea where he um the romance in this. I put in quotations. Because, like, I guess near the end, she does have romantic feelings for him and whatnot. But initially for her, it's all um, sexual feelings. It's no romantic feelings until later on. And for him, it's like, yeah, sexual feelings, but also, like, he just really likes her and loves her and respects, like, that she wants to do this stuff. And that's the type of person she is. So, like, she he does things for her because that's how he his love language, I feel like that's, like, every love interest, male love interest in all these books, but, um, that's, like, the way that his love language is, so he, uh, does things for her and builds things for her, because that's what she wants, and that's what she needs, um, and whatnot, so, like, it's, you, more obvious from his point of view that he's into her not only because he, like, wants to tap that, but also because, like, he likes her, um, meanwhile, from her side, from her point of view, no, nah, she just wants to tap that, <laughs> honestly she's so real we need more of that from women in books um honestly. yeah no it's not until like near the very very ending when this thing happens oh my god i just remembered this thing happening <sighs> when we get there you're gonna scream um and that's when it really hit me that she liked him too i didn't get it until that point and this is like the last like 10 percent of the book i'm talking about so um <laughs> good times mm-hmm. um so, while she's out there sitting in the sun and eating, uh, he pretends to be listening for demons while he watches her eat. Um, and while that's happening, she's thinking about all the emotions she feels for Orpheus, and yet none of them are fear or anger. Like, she feels pity that he's been treated all these ways, um, and all this stuff. Like, she likes him in the sense that, like, he's nice to her, but that's about it. Um, but she feels bad that she likes him because he's nice to her because he's killed people but also like people have harmed her more than he ever has so like this whole thing so she feels like she's supposed to hate him but like she's also like internally like but he's not that bad of a guy I've met worse humans and I'm like you know valid yeah 
Um, she makes a plan to have him bathe her with the oil with his bare hands, so it only has to be once a day. Uh, partially make it easier for her to escape at one point, but also, um, she, she's turned on by all the touching. Um, and she thinks, uh, doing it only once a day will help. Spoiler alert, the idea of, the fact that his bare hands are touching her, um, make it more sensual, which just makes it so much better. I, Obviously. You know, I will. The no, amount of time it that she emotion. What? <laughs> Hold on, I hold on. two seconds there. If I had a dollar every time she orgasms in this bathtub, I could pay off my student loans. If that gives you an idea of what the hell is mm-hmm. happening. Um, so, uh, oh yeah, no human before has gone to the point where they willingly let his bare hands touch them, um, which is like, it just, it's a lot of, like, her doing things and, things and then him being like, wow, no human's done this before. And I'm like, dude, she is also a lonely-ass bitch who starved for touch and attention. So, like, Real. let's go. Um, she, he lets her use some of the spinach in the garden because she doesn't really like it Um, to dye one of the dresses green because she doesn't really want to just wear white all the time. Um, On a green dress, to the fact she doesn't like spinach, get some help in your head. <laughs> Um, yeah, spinach is delicious. What the fuck? Um, dude, she could, like, make smoothies. Because she's got, like, fruit, and she could, like, make green smoothies and stuff. Listen, the majority of my diet at this point is just spinach. It is, you know. <laughs> just throw it in a bowl, and then you eat it. It doesn't taste like anything, but occasionally it tastes like dirt, in your, and it's fine. Um, so it gets to the, the point where he's bathing her for the first time without the gloves on. Um, and he finds her really soft, and... It lingers his touch in some places. Um, you can Ooh. probably guess where. Uh, and it turns on her, her on more. Yay. Um, he notices a somewhat recent scar behind her ear, which, like, makes him mad on her defense. Um, we learn later on uh, that some of the villagers uh, from her home village, right, um, one point decided uh when they were supposed to give her food a uh, great idea i think i already brought this up that they were just gonna like throw rocks at her instead and one of them actually like hit her in the head and all the stuff happened because of, yeah um oh. so uh she looks at his hands and holds them briefly and isn't scared by them great times i already talked about the knuckles and whatnot um and then after all this she has a wet dream about him <laughs> And then he comes in because he senses something is wrong. And, like, he senses her heart rate rising. And he's like, oh, no, what's wrong? So he goes into her room while she's sleeping and starts sniffing her to figure out what's wrong. And she wakes up to this. Um, and instead of being embarrassed by this, because she knows he will be able to sense the arousal on her, he literally... Why is there a Snapchat from you on my phone? <laughs> Never mind, I accept it. Anyways, um, she just lets him sniff her, knowing that he'll smell the arousal. Um, so he starts sniffing further down her body, uh, until he recognizes it. Um, so he starts uh doing some petting in between the legs until uh she comes and then plays a game of hide the tongue. Oh, I I'm forgot about this. <laughs> plays a game of hide the tongue, the tongue inside her, but accidentally breaks her hymen causing her to bleed a little. Now, if you remember, if he tastes blood or smells blood, he goes into beast mode. So, she's bleeding onto, and his tongue's in there. And his mouth is all around her lower. (laughs) Are you Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. My earbuds died. One. Why is she bleeding? Two, how does he know what arousal smells like? Three, there's so many questions I have. There's so much happening. Um, um, uh, he has had sex before, so he knows what arousal is. Um, that is an important thing for later on in the book, actually. Um, I mean, I guess that makes sense. But she's bleeding because he broke her hymen accidentally with his tongue, because his tongue is, like, very long. Like, it's like a snake tongue. 
we anyways continue um so um yeah so he he almost goes into beast mode because of the taste of the blood right um but managed to stop due to his own arousal being stronger than his bloodlust exit <laughs> just exit i i want to exit my life um He's freaking out, thinking he's hurting her. At which point, she explains he took her virgin. Oh yeah, so he's like, "Oh no, you're bleeding. What did I do? I'm so sorry." Blah 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 blah. And she's like, "No, dude, you took my virginity." And he's like, "What?" <laughs> um. Th- she then realizes he didn't know what a hymen was, which means he's never done this with a human before. But also makes her question why he requests the brides to be pure. At which point, he explains he wants them to be pure of disease. It was just a misunderstanding of language and whatnot to make it so they were all in first, it, it, they just had to be pure of disease not that type of pure um so gray gray um he tries to check if she's okay but she flinches from his touch so he leaves uh he goes the next morning to get her more water from a nearby stream and while he's gone she tries to make a run for it because she um, a demon man and she's freaking out about that idea she's like oh no um no, no, she's so real for that because imagine you're just laying there in bed after after this demon leaves and you'd be like, a demon just took my virginity. Like, what would you do with yourself? Like, I... Um, obviously try to escape and then get attacked by a spider demon. <laughs> Literally the next slide I wrote down is she ends up getting caught by a spider demon Um, that likes to feed on feet. On Sorrow, um, and in the process, she drops the dagger that she stole from him, and the crown thing, um, so the spider demon uses the memories of her family's death to torture her into sorrow before going to eat her, when, uh, Orpheus shows up, yay, right in the nick of time, um, he's already in beast mode, and has to fight the demon, there's, like, a lot of fighting, none of it really made sense in my brain, um, but he ends up tearing her apart, uh, literally into pieces, I don't know if you've seen, uh, anyone play Poppy Playtime? (laughs) But in chapter two, there's um, Mommy Longlegs, I think is what her name is. Uh, and there's a part where she dies at the end. And that's what I was picturing. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense to anyone, but. Um, uh, so he sets Rhea free. Uh... Oh, when he was fighting the spider demon, it reminded him of his human brides and what happened to them including one who seemed to have been really close with uh and he was injured in the fight um Rhea starts running as she does um so he goes after her and passes on her and is questioning what to do when she hugs him and apologizes while crying and that Loki freaks him out um he picks her up and carries her as he runs because demons are smelling blood and coming um So, they're being chased, but Orpheus passes out right outside the salt circle. Due to poison from the spider demon. Uh, but when he falls to the ground, because he's, like, carrying her, um, in, like, one arm while he's, like, running on three legs, right? Um, so, when he goes to pass out, he, like, feels it coming or something, so he makes sure to protect her head. So, when he collapses and she falls to the ground out of his arms or whatnot, she doesn't hit her head. Um, very caring. We love that for him. Uh, she tries to drag him across the border, but it messes up the salt line so demons can get through. She runs to the porch and is safe due to the dried herb boards uh, on the, like, end of the porch steps, right? <gasps> Thank you, I got food now. Thank you, Mommy. Thank you, Mommy. What you eating? Uh, chicken and potato in the air fryer and some peas. And you're not even going to share. I know, right? I'm going to eat one of the potatoes. Oh, those are hot potatoes, but they're good because they're nice and crispy from the air fryer. Hot potatoes. (laughs) 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 Uh I'm keeping that in. I don't care. So, um, 
she gets a sword from Orpheus's room and straight up bodies the demon after it gets a bite out of Orpheus's side. Like, she straight up bodies this bitch, and it was hilarious. Um, and then she drags Orpheus up to the port so he's safe, but, uh, neither- another demon grabs onto her ankle and pulls her back, uh, and gets a swipe at her shoulder, um, but she ends up fighting it back enough where it's injured and has to run away. Um, see, she manages to get him into his bed. It's, like, giving me, uh, the original Beauty of the Beast, uh, Disney Beauty of the Beast, where, like, how did she get the beast onto the horse after the whole entire wolf attack happened, right? Like, how, how did she do that? Listen, sometimes women are just determined and women do amazing things because, because of women, okay? You know, cause women, 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 you know, you know. No, it's my dinner. You can't have my dinner, Bella. Um... So, Bella is so mimi. I'm in your walls waiting for my chicken and potatoes and to eat. Thank you. <laughs> I'll let mom know. Um, so, um, she binds up his wounds, taking off his shirt. Um, and this whole time he's been worried about her seeing his chest because it scares humans. Um, at which point we learned that he has fins in some places. Um, it's explained later on, but basically duskwalkers, uh, kind of take partial form of whatever they've eaten. So, like, the more human the duskwalker eats, the more human it becomes. So, that means he's eaten a lot of humans because, like, he's very humanoid. But, um, like, the first beast it kills and eats, uh, that's whose head, skull it gets, and horns it gets. Um, which is why it's got, like, I think a elk skull or something like that, right? Um... But also, uh, because, like, he eats a lot of fish at the river while he gets to fresh water every day. Um, he, while he's there, he just eats fish to, like, help keep his hunger down, right? Um, because of that, he has a lot of fins. Um, she ends up bathing off all the blood from herself, but it basically deletes the oil bath spell, so demons can smell her now. Um, she binds her own wounds and tries to sleep, but a bunch of demons are outside and keep her awake. Um, she makes some new herb wards to replace the ones on the porch, but she's too scared to go out and replace the others or get food. Um, and then she comes up with some kind of solution, which is basically, um, she cuddles him in his bed. She basically sleeps half underneath him so that his scent covers hers. Um, now this is where I start you writing down. do what you want to do. <laughs> Um, this is where I start, uh, making some thoughts. Um, the first one is this is more erotic than Daniel's dead. This potatoes are really good. I don't know what's the shit I don't them, but they're gross. Um, uh, also the sex scenes give me less good version of Dragon's Bride by Katie Robert, and I will reread that book for this podcast. I don't fucking care. I'm gonna read so many Katie Roberts. Uh, now that I'm done with the Ice Planet books, God, so excited. Um, the, the one is still on my Kindle. I still have it. It is ready. Whatever. Dude, it's I, so good. I love like, it. You're gonna have a good time. It's a purple. You love purples. Though you've never read a purple book, you love purples. Exactly. Exactly. Dude, um, I really hope Bloodmark has a purple because there's like the main character. There's, like, a flirtation with the my favorite character, Cell, in the first book. But she also was dating the one of the other main characters, Nick, in the first book, right? And you learn in that book that Cell is bi, and when they were kids, because he grew up with Nick, that he had a thing for Nick. And he kind of has a thing for Brie, like, it's kind of obvious. And the way the whole entire love triangle issue could be solved if they're just a throuple, you know? The only thing that I have different. about lore mm-hmm. stuff that I'm not going to tell you because it's on your TBR, even though I don't know if you'd like it, I... Listen, I, I, I'm reading it for your trouble. birthday, okay? Just, it's it's happening very, very soon, okay? Don't worry, don't worry. You can tell me everything ever, okay? I am worried. I'm very worried. Um, oh yeah. This is my favorite note. Um, the writing style is getting to me, and I find myself not wanting to pick it back up to a point where I was editing a whole entire podcast episode. I actually think it was the Things We Never Got Over episode. 
that I edited, which isn't even out yet. Like, it's still two weeks away from now when we're currently recording this. We recorded that, like, over a month ago. So, like... Because we're crazy. So, like, so we're prepared. almost two months ahead of time, I edited that podcast so I didn't have to read this book anymore. Because I didn't want to pick it back up. And also, I watered all 50 of my mother's plates. Over 50 of my mother's plates. Uh, so that I wouldn't have to pick it back up. <laughs> um... And then I was like, maybe if it's half as long, I would like it more or something like that. But I don't know. Maybe. Because I, like, I started getting sick of it pretty close to this point. Um, like, the charm of it you started think? to get annoying. Because the writing style started, like, I liked the romance aspect a little bit in the beginning. But, like, I didn't care. Because, like, the writing style was getting to me. And I was like, maybe if it was shorter. But, like, who knows. Um, also, I had a few theories, but all of them are wrong. So we're just going to ignore them. I probably would have got tired of the writing style even sooner than you did so maybe it's a good thing i did do nothing but every once in a while i was kind of curious maybe i'll go back and read some of those stuff mm-hmm. but like i don't know i really wish i had been enough dip, but i didn't because podcast also at that point i'd already taken four pages of notes it was too late for me um uh when he awakens uh and finds her underneath her or underneath him right he's surprised by her willingness to touch him and to fix up his wounds, and to be so close to him, uh, for the two days he slept, which means she hasn't, like, done anything, like, he even go to the bathroom in, like, two days, um, and that she was willing to get wounded to protect him, uh, he lets her continue to sleep, because she's still asleep at this point, um, he lets her sleep in his bed as he goes out and scares all the demons away and fixes the salt ring and tortures the de- tortures the demon who harmed her, like the one that injured her shoulder and ankle, like he can smell her blood on it. So he literally tortures this demon. And um throws So it. real. Uh and then he throws it to the other demons across the salt ring so that they will eat him because he's too injured. Right? Um and then he fixes all the other wards, washes away all the blood, um, finds the crown again, and um and then, uh, oh, yeah, and then he washes off all the blood from himself. So he washes, like, all the blood from, like, the front step and whatnot, but also, like, from himself. Um, and then he goes back into his room to find Raya awake, uh, and crying for her family. Um, uh, she, because of this torture that the spider demon did on her to, like, uh, bring out her sorrow, right? Um, she is upset and believes that she actually is the dark woman that killed her family. Um, which at fo- he she like finally tells him about all that and he informs her there's no such thing as dark omens and she uh she probably didn't die uh to due to the demon's blood loss and her lack of fear like they didn't know her because they were so focused on the blood and if she because she's like currently not afraid of like really much I mean like, she's afraid but she doesn't like register fear and whatnot so they can't smell it on her and so he assumes that she was like that as a child too so she they probably couldn't smell her over the smell of the blood and so didn't even notice her there um and that's probably when she survived um and then he gives her food uh and then they share the bait and cuddle and sleep some more and then she wakes uh she has to bathe again and gets so uh turned on by it uh but th- he senses this finally and um rubs one out for her uh and then it's insinuated that this happens like every day now every day that he bathes her i mean get you a man honestly if i could find a man like that I'd gross. Put the <laughs> gross why find you a man when you can find yourself a woman who can do the exact same thing probably better true. you know true Listen, you are bisexual for a reason. Men is not that reason. <laughs> um, the last time I flirted with a girl, well, I didn't really flirt with her, but the last time I tried to talk to a girl, she just ghosted me, so that was fun. We love that. Ah! I dropped my fork. We're gonna ignore that. Um. Uh, she teaches him how to cook human food, um, because no one's actually, like, taught him how to cook human be- food before. Um, she learns about that there's, like, such thing as a demon city. Uh, and also, um, 
Orpheus tells her about the only other human he has really ever loved and has survived, um, all this stuff. Um, and he teaches her how to fight with a sword. Um, they start sword training and all this stuff. Um, he also informs her that if she freely gives him her soul, she will be safe and able to stay with him. Uh, neither one of them really know what that entails because, um, things happen, let me tell you. Um, the demons, when they attacked, uh, messed up the raspberry bush, which makes her sad because that was her favorite. We already know I screamed about this. Um, uh, she asked for meat because, like, she's been on a very fruit and vegetable diet. I assume she's not getting proper protein in her diet right now. Um, but he's scared to leave her alone again. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, because she ran away. Um, it's going to rain and she loves the rain, but the rain will erase his salt ring. So he has to, he sends her inside while he protects the house and she has to stay inside the whole time. Um, but then she's like, I don't want to sit inside the whole time. So like, she goes to the wooden porch border thing, uh, where the stairs down onto the ground are, um, and sits there instead because there's the herb wards on the edge of that. So like, she can still sit there and be protected. So she sits technically outside and just watches him and hangs out with him while he protects the house, right? Um, and she's just sitting there eating her dinner as she's watching the dumber demons run into the wards to try to attack her. She's just laughing at them as this is um, happening. You need entertainment sometimes. <laughs> um, a witch owl shows up and dances around the garden. I don't know what I... that means. I don't know what a witch owl is, and I've read this whole book, and I know what the witch owl is. I don't know what a witch owl is. <laughs> it's a witch owl. I don't know. It's, it's, dude, there's so much to this witch owl, you don't even understand. Um... Where was I? Witch Owl. Um, so the Witch Owl is like really old and powerful as has dark magic. Uh, she's the one who taught Orpheus how to get a human companion and had to get one soul freely, keeps them safe, give, uh, and gave him the crown thing to protect them and made the garden. Um, the next morning where Orpheus takes Ray to the garden briefly to find everything has grown back, but the Witch Owl has also grown a lemon tree. Um, so fun times. Another dusk walker shows up, uh, which is the one from the second book, um, asking for more salt and learns that you can have a human companion. Uh, we learned the dusk walkers' ter characteristics are due to what they eat, which is why Orpheus has fins, eating fish, blah blah blah. Um, so Orpheus Loki guards the place for a few days before the ground is dry enough to do another salt circle without like melting, I guess. Um, there's some cute moments where, uh, oh yeah, she just suddenly gets her period one day. Like, it's just out of the blue. Like, she's, they're just eating food, hanging out at the table, and then, boom, blood. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's not how it works. I don't know. I've been living on this earth for nearly 24 years now, but I'm pretty sure that's not how it works. I'm just gonna say it. I'm just gonna say it. But anyways, blood, which is an issue to demons. These are really good potatoes. Okay. Way to rub it in my face, but see mm -hmm. that I don't also have potatoes. Um, so basically because scent of blood, um, I'm not wanting to kill her. Um, he has to go outside for multiple days. Like, he stays outside for multiple days while she's stuck inside while this is happening. And she's like, fuck, I don't want, I don't want to be alone. Um, eventually she does go to sleep and he comes in half ready to kill her and she's super nonchalant about it all. At least I won't have cramps anymore. And I'm just like, mood? Um, he learns what cramps she's are. She's so real. <laughs> I know, right? He learns what cramps are and feels bad for her pain. Um, we love that. Uh, so, oh yeah, so as they're talking, so like, when he's in beast mode, the text is bold and italicized, and so slowly it turns to just italicized and then normal to show that he's exiting beast mode, right? Um, she uses him as a giant heating pad. Get you a man. Um, she's basically petting him and then decides to ask about, oh god. <laughs> I'd like to know when I'm about to break up his tickets, but she asked me to do dishes again. <laughs> just like in the last episode. Hi, puppy. I please give Bubba a kiss on her head. And okay, continue. thank you. 
Um, so she decides to ask about his dick, and then there's a bunch of petting. Uh, at which point I apparently highlighted a bunch. Literally, there's 20 highlights. Um, he ends up... 20? <laughs> yeah, I took 20 highlights, uh, almost 20. I, I think it's technically 19. I took t highlights 9 through 28, or this whole entire section I'm talking about. Um, he ends up being satiated via his desire or hunger that his blood hunger isn't an issue. I don't even know what that was. <laughs> what was that sentence? I don't know. Um, all, oh yeah, also he hasn't come in eons, but has had sex and seems to know it will fit in a human, um, cute domestic bliss scenes where they're cute together, um, she's going to make him a present and he's going to go out and get her meat, so she's left on her own for a few days and has an internal battle about leaving but decides to stay, um, is this the point where I, like, actually start describing the deck? I think, maybe. Um, so, in this 100 pages, oh yeah, each section, I, like, made 100 pages, all this stuff. Um, there's, like, a bunch of uncharacteristic stuff. Basically, Rhea has always denied the idea that she's a bad omen and didn't, uh, cause her family's death by silently crying over being a bad omen and killing her family. And then also, um, on the other side, Orpheus is a very big, or not, very big on not scaring her away and yet when he's rubbing one out for her in the tub he's just speaking all his dark and dirty thoughts not worrying if it'll scare her away um uh, which feels very out of character for him um i literally wrote i almost quit when the dick came out literally so yeah you're about to get this described um and also i would like you to know the sex scenes are both boring and wtf okay let's go up to 50 percent is where Hold i'm up. gonna go on these highlights. let's go you ready no. <laughs> I gotta eat some potato. <laughs> I gotta get my stamina. Hi, puppy. Okay. Okay. First one tame. It's just her scent. Um, what she smells like. Uh, she apparently smells like, uh, elderberry and rose, okay. red rose. Um, so basically her elderberry and red rose scent embraced him and the squishiness of her scent a thrill through him. Great. Love that. Mm -hmm. Um, contentment radiating oh. through him, he gently nuzzled the top of her head with the side of his jaw, adoring how she felt in his arms. He doubted he'd get much rest with how quickly his heart was beating, but he knew he'd enjoy every tortured second of it. I assume that's one of the times when they were cuddling. I don't know. Um, oh, this is one of her internal monologue things where she's contemplating everything about this. Um, how insane would it be if I felt desire for a creature that can't even feel it? He obviously knew enough, but she wasn't even keen on the idea of being attracted to something that may not even have genitalia. Obviously, this is back when um, she didn't even know he felt things like that for her or any of this stuff. Um, oh god. <laughs> I just read the next time. I just gotta scream. She could tell how hard her heart was thumping by her left breast floating in the water, jiggling lightly with each beat. Uh... Okay, I guess. I. What? Okay. Uh huh. I'm not sure that's a thing, but okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, if he could feel desire, does that mean dot 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 question mark? Also, almost like she was afraid of the answer. Rhea quietly asked, Do you have a cock, Orpheus? Bella, please do not lay on my computer. <laughs> that I mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I you had to say that I am so <laughs> sorry <laughs> I feel like you know it's been so long I don't even remember these highlights so um he leaned forward swiping his dog over her ear and round it inside it and sent a shiver through her she heard the squelch of it against her ear hole oh. gross <laughs> I don't like, you know, like that <laughs> Every ounce of control had been tested. His cock had been hard, fully engorged, and near boring oh. with deep throbs. <laughs> I do, I'm not having a good time. Her bright green okay, eyes were like a thick forest, easy for one to get lost in, and he found he lost himself when he looked into them. 
I never understood like the tongue in the ear thing. Like, why, why, why do you want a wet ear? Like, that's disturbing to me. Like, I don't want anything I just found it very and ear, I'm and disturbed. I like, about it. Oh God, we're very close to the highlight. That's very long. It's about what his dick is. Okay. Oh, oh Lord. <laughs> Even though she never touched a man before, she knew they generally had squishy bits at their grow groin that would harden when aroused. Okay, we're at the point where it starts describing his dick. Have fun. Um, it was fucking huge and was definitely spiraling in a downward twor twist. It, it felt similar to the spiral of a rosebud that had yet to bloom. He started pulling his hips away when she thought she felt one of the spiral pieces wriggle. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't worry, there's more. Um, the spiral released in something shot through the center of it. His cock slipped over her palm hot and went with its own lubricant, rubbing up her arm until it touched near her elbow. The spiral had released to show that it had actually been holding his cock back at, as tentacles, like limbs, writhed around her fingers where she'd been trying to hold them. She tried to yank her hand back in shock, but one of them latched onto her hand and held her down before a second one round around her wrist. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh. If the fact his cock wrestling inside his body hadn't been enough to tell it was different, the fact she could feel it had four tentacles around the base of it, about five inches long, each sure did. Uh. <laughs> it was a strange <laughs> sensation to feel them writhing around her slain fingers, and she noticed that the insides had little nodules, while the outside was smooth. Huh? <laughs> She pulled her hands backward, feeling the slime cover his cock, and the way it wasn't completely smooth over three sides of him, uh, she could feel little frills that were incredibly soft, but gave him texture running the entire length of him on three sides. Underneath was a deep crease, and when she dipped her thumbs into it, she thought she felt him harden even more. Then her hands grabbed the head. It was bulbous, but she felt more soft frills around the large room that seemed to be the thickest part of him. The tip was more like the shape of an oval than... And there was a deep slit in it that followed the groove underneath him like it was attached to the same line, and a hole where she thought his release would come from. Uh. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is the great part where they start making out. He learns how to kiss. Um... Where, like, he sticks out his tongue to, like, lick her, because that's, like, a thing he does. Um, and she kisses his tongue. And then this happens. Uh, again, question mark, he pleaded his tongue running over her lips. She licked him back. Again, he demanded with a heavier voice, and she did it. It was like kissing, since this was the only way she guessed they could. Again, basically, he licks her lips, and then she will, in turn, lick his tongue. And that's the closest thing to kissing. <laughs> Oh, yes, we're back to the tentacles. Um, those tentacles slipped around her arms before he yelped when Rhea got to the base of him and ran her hands over two oval-shaped bulges. They were underneath his cock and attached to the base of him like they were partially embedded inside. I can't wait to label this as explicit on Spotify. <coughs> Spotify is not clean, I swear. Uh, uh, her, his tongue entered her mouth twist around her own. She flinched in surprise but didn't reject it. I... His tongue still t being twirled around hers since she had opened her mouth to allow it. It was a warm and wiggling sensation. His heady tasting so live that filling the crevice of her mouth. Why oh yeah, this is where she deep throats his tongue. Her eyes watered at the depth oh. of his tongue. And it was deep in her throat, and he continued to thrust. <laughs> He's just thrusting it to her head at this point. So not doing it yet. Um, and that is the last one for this section. Thankfully, I wrote to what percentage uh, I wrote, or I copied these quotes down, so I didn't, like, accidentally go for over, because I didn't want to count fucking that many highlights. Anyways, don't you love that hundred pages? <laughs> I don't, oh my god. So while he's gone, um, getting her food, right, um, and Demon tries to attack the border, but she kills it. 
But, like a dumb, dumb idiot, she's all like, oh, I can kill the thing, and leaves the border and kills it. But, the blood, like, splatters everywhere. It messes up the salt circle, um, so she goes and quickly fixes it. Uh, and then the other dusk walker from before sees this and walks through the salt circle since it only keeps out those who intend harm. Um, his name is Mavka, and he saw Orpheus leave and is there to ask Rhea questions about humans when a flying demon tries to take her away. Um, because the border thing doesn't really protect against flying demons, but they're rare in the area. But, um, the scent of blood, you know? Um, Mavka kills it, protecting her, but gets injured, sending him into beast mode, which she hides in the house from, uh, eventually he comes out enough and she lets him stay in the circle since he's bleeding and demons would attack him if he left. And he probably wouldn't die. Actually, he wouldn't die. I know this for a fact. Um, like, he wouldn't die from it, but it'd be very painful and, uh, so she feels bad and lets him stay. Um, Orpheus returns and noses her bruised shoulder from being dropped by the flying demon and assumes Mavka did it and attacks him. She stops him, informs him of what really happened, leaving out the demon she killed with his blood. Uh, attracted the flying one so like he's like in beast mode attacking him saying that he's gonna kill him because he knows how to kill a duskwalker spoiler there's like this whole thing about duskwalkers are basically k killable except for one way um and she literally gets a in the way of him in beast mode and stops him i i can't do this mm -hmm. um she tries to get him to help mafka make a house by visiting the demon city uh so that he can get his own humans but Orpheus says he won't be able to stay inside. Oh, she won't be able to stay um, inside. Uh, she just assumes he means he doesn't trust her to stay inside, so she, she gives him the cold shoulder, which really upsets and confuses him. Now, this is where we get some communication issues. Um, she doesn't talk to him for, like, over a day. Uh, and eventually, he's able to corner her and inform her, um, and, like, actually explain to her that the journey would take a total of eight days, at least. Um, so she'd have to go outside at some point to grab food. Because uh, it's all very perishable, right? Uh, and so... Uh, and then also from his point of view, we learn they have to full-on bang for him to earn her soul, but she doesn't know that. Uh, they make up, she, like, understands that, okay, I get why. Um... And all this stuff. Uh, so they they make up, and he agrees to let her come with to the Demon City. Uh, they get a biggie back ride. Right? Yay, fun times. Um, so they're they're going to this city. Um, every night, uh, he bathes her in a stream to hide her scent. Um, and so they're in the middle of the forest at night. Mafka's like nearby, totally can hear him. Make sure to rub one out for her. Don't worry. He makes sure that happens. Um, there is a boring shopping chapter. Uh. Or they just go around. Not really important. Uh, but the witch owl in human form leads her to some books, uh, which include how to fight with a sword, different types of monsters, where we learned ghosts are real in this universe, and a storybook with a bookmark of Beauty and the Beast. Oh. Yep. Uh, she also uh, gets one on house building for Mavka. Um... She befriends the owner of the bookshop guy. Uh, she learns that there's, like, a Demon King guy. Pretty, uh, bad guy. Orpheus doesn't like them for good reason. Um, she learns demons can have kids. Lovely. Oh. Uh, Rhea reads to Mavka because he doesn't know how to read because he hasn't eaten enough humans to do that. Um, so, technically, there, there are pictures and stuff in the building book so that, like, he can follow, but she does read some of it to him. Um, oh, yeah, God, so they finally have full-on penetrative sex, her and Orpheus, and apparently to have sex, she, he has to change her insides, like, there's, like, this thing where he's, like, ripping her from the outside to make it so, <laughs> yeah, um, and it's not, like, I was trying such a hard time to understand this, but basically, it, he basically has to alter her anatomy, so that they, they can bang. And that's what happens. Don't worry. There's plenty of highlights about it. Um, this is also around the time when I started, uh, speed reading. Um, I was also confused if this meant that since they banged, she gave him her soul. She did not. Um, oh, also when she was, like, angry, 
<laughs> so the scene when uh she was like angry because he said that he wouldn't take Mavka to the Demon City because uh she wouldn't be able to stay inside and she just automatically assumed that he was dissing her and all this stuff. Both Orpheus and I were very confused on why she was very angry. I was like, what is going on? Why is she so angry? And he was the same way. And so it was very funny. Um, also, I put in all caps communication. Okay, ready for more highlights? Um, I guess. <laughs> she didn't move away from him when he got closer, but that seemed much worse. Like, she was ignoring the very existence of him rather than scuttling to get away. She was like a ghost that was haunting him. God, is that hinting at something near the end? Um, anyways, uh, yeah, that's when she's ignoring him. Uh, Orpheus moved his free hand from around her to cut the back of her head, licking her tongue, the inside of her cheeks, even her teeth with his own flat tongue. Because that's apparently how you do makeup. I don't know. Um, she wasn't particularly in interested in the mythical creatures. Who cares about elves when they aren't real? Um, why did she need to know all these made-up facts if the, if the author had been trying to fabricate their myth to be truth? Um, I still don't know, but what would have happened in the story if Bell had fucked the beast before he became a human? No, good times. Um, uh, what am I, I don't think I'm here anymore, Bestie. I'm so sorry. But you gotta hear this great highlight. Was it possible for someone to fuck their way into someone's heart? Because it felt like he'd done that. I mean... I mean... Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. We only have two more sections. Let's go. Let's go. One and a half more pages of notes. We're, gonna die. We're so close. I'm gonna eat another potato. These are really fucking good. I want potato. Bella. You a puppy? I can't believe yeah. you're putting Bella through this too. Poor Bella. She gets to lick the plate afterwards. What do you mean, poor Bella? She has to be in the same room as you as we discuss these terrible, terrible things. It's a poor Bella. <laughs> She's a dog. She doesn't understand it. I feel like she Just remember, more than one thing to okay. And that was inside her. Also, apparently I didn't highlight oh. it, but it, it's like a whole thing where the part, like, it goes into his body because it has to be wet at all points or else it, like, actually what? causes physical pain, which is why there was, like, that whole unfolding part. Um, And so at one point after they bang, he just leaves it in her overnight. Uh. She's nice and moist. And what? Uh, and that's why the tentacles are a thing to like pull him inside. Yeah. I. Also, when they have sex, there's like this whole thing where the tentacles are like holding onto her thighs, and at one point know... he uses his own hand to distract the tentacles so that they don't bother her, and she's like, "I don't mind." I mean, she kind of signed up for it, right? So why would she mind the tentacles? I don't know. <laughs> Um, I don't know. If I like look at the bright side. At least she can't get pregnant because they're different species. Thank God. If it, I would, if we just, if she could still have it pregnant, that would make this even more worse. I would literally. Do you mean uh, I set up our berries number two? Please. <laughs> I'm begging you right now, Bestie. <laughs> you only have to listen to one more of those. Um. So they do it almost every day. Uh, and he's big into aftercare. Um, at one point they take a bath together and he tells her about the first woman he cared for who left him saying he was the worst uh, when the Demon King showed her a way out. Um, he goes to get her water a few days later and she's practicing her sword uh, fighting when she knows the man watching her. It is obviously the Demon King, but she doesn't realize that it's until he kidnaps her and takes her to his castle after ripping off her crown. Um, he is half elf, half demon. From a probable non consensual relationship, um, and he was hunted down in the demon world for being uh, a halfling. Uh, so he used his elf magic to make a portal to Earth and brought all the demons and made them veiled to build an army to kill all the elves with. So the plan is to build up the demon army by having them feed on humans 
and so that they can go back to their original home world so that they can he can use all the demons to kill all the elves who betrayed him because of his I assume the non conceptual person in the relationship was the elf woman. Um, but it's never really explained any. Um so you know, good times. I need everyone to be so serious. Mm-hmm. This is the part where a lot of shit is happening, and it's pure chaos, okay? I, like, I cut out, like, 16 times where they bang. I don't actually know the number, but it's, like, I've seen them out. Um, he hates Duskwalker since they are stronger than, uh, every demon and everything, but won't help him out in his personal crusade, right? Um, if you... Oh, what the hell? I know, right? This is a very narcissistic man. Um, Duskwalkers won't die, uh, even when you cut off their head, and he knows this from testing it out on another Duskwalker, which I assume, based off the description, is the one from the third book. Um, but while torturing this Duskwalker, he managed to get the how out of him before the witch owl helped him escape, so he knows how to kill Duskwalkers now. Um... He has a human that he has a relationship with that is clearly Orpheus's ex, like the first woman he fell for, all this stuff. Um, yeah, it's very clearly her. Um, she tries to help Rhea, saying they saved her, and explains how she never wanted to do anything with Orpheus but was forced in fear of being killed. But Rhea still victim blames her, thinking it's all because she never tried to see who he really is. Which, like, she's a real bitch in the book. I'll give you that. Um, the ex. But, like, and hear me out. It is still assault if she feels like she's coerced into it. In the name of oh, yeah. Like, even if, and I quote, she doesn't, like, she didn't try to try hard enough to get to know him. And that's why. That, that's why she was afraid of him. It's still, she was still afraid of him to the point where she felt coerced to do it. Therefore, it's still assault, which is... You know, a um, lot of victim blaming. Um, uh, oh, what's happening in this book, Bestie? Yep. Uh, okay, so her name is Katarina, by the way. I did write this out beforehand. Um, uh, so basically, there's this whole plan. Oh, yeah, also, like, she takes uh, Raya to take a bath, um, there's, like, a lot of demons in this place, but they, like, are ordered to not harm her, all the stuff, um, so she takes a bath, and, uh, I don't like to order a demon, like, I don't know, so uh, Katarina, uh, makes it so that she has to go into the bedroom where she is to get her clothes, to get to rest, so she sees her naked and sees, like, the scar from the, like, ripping apart the body to make it so he can bang her type thing, and she's all like, I have the same one, and lifts up her dress to show her, and it's all like, it's okay, I know what you've been through. Which, like, I get you went through consensual relationships with him, but she did not. It's like this whole thing. It's a great time. And by a great time, I mean I wanted to claw out my own hair. It's a good time. Um, Rhea. So they have this plan where uh, they're baiting Orpheus there with Rhea, because they know that Orpheus will come. Um, and then, at which point, uh, Katarina will distract him, um, try to get him to join them, um, and if it doesn't work, which I assume it won't, um, she will kill him, uh, in revenge for the assault, which, you know, she's a real bitch, but, you know, we love a, uh, boss woman getting revenge, you know, we love it, iconic, I, I love how I'm on the side, Loki on the side of the main antagonist, love it, um, so, I don't like getting these bitches. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so, part of the plan is, like, Katarina's gotta, like, flirt with him, um, to get him to go, to, like, choose her, and so that she can get close enough to, like, do the thing to kill him, which is basically, you have to break the skull, so she's gonna take a dagger through his skull. Um, so she goes to do that, um, while, uh, Demon Guy, Demon King Guy, um, cause he has magic, he has magical powers, uh, so he uses it to, like, make him and Rhea invisible and watch the whole thing so that she can watch Orpheus choose Katarina over her. Uh, so in fact, it doesn't work. He doesn't fall for it instantaneously. He's like, nah, that's weird. <laughs> we love that. Also, yeah. fun fact, fun fact, Katarina is in a relationship with the elf demon king guy. I never wrote down his yeah. name. Um, 
she he did initially take her back to the human world. That was like the kind of like she made a deal with him. He eventually showed up uh, and was like, "Hey, I can take you back to humans." And she was like, "Yes, please." And then she went back to humans. And then she learned um, with the whole like doing the stuff to her to make it so that she could bang Orpheus. Um, I made it so human dick, not the same anymore. It doesn't do the job. So she's with him because he's the only dick that can do it for her. And she doesn't want to bang a full um, demon. Fuck back. Um, so, anyways, Orpheus chooses Rhea over Kateria. Um, Kateria gets upset. Goes to break his skull through the dagger, killing him. When Rhea comes out and tackles her, um, uh, and Katarina gets very angry that, like, Loverboy let her go and all this stuff. Right? Let Raya go. Uh, but apparently Raya kicked him in the no-no square. <laughs> so that he would, like, the, he would drop his spell and let go of her so she could run uh, out. Yeah. Um, so there's, like, this whole fight scene. I remember this vividly because I was watching the dogs while I was listening to the audiobooks out loud. I'm oh very happy I don't have neighbors. Um, but basically, Orpheus and Demon King fight. Uh, um, while Ray and Katarina fight with swords. Good time. Um, so Demon King can like teleport, so it's like a weird fight where Orpheus is technically stronger, but every time he lands a blow, like it's very rare to happen because like he can teleport, so like you know. Um, uh, but he does get it. Who hits in? Um, Ray kills Katarina. Uh, straight up body oh. Hilarious. I died. Um, and Orpheus goes to Rhea and plans to leave and just leave this whole thing to be. But the Demon King, uh, gets very angry and throws Katarina's dagger into Rhea's back. So she is dying in Orpheus's arms as the Demon King lifts the spell, masking her scent that he put on her so the demons wouldn't attack her. So if she doesn't so die curious. soon, Orpheus will eat her alive. After Orpheus accidentally uses her blood to make a protection spell. Oh yeah, so like, she's like, all this is happening. And then, also the plan is the Demon King's gonna, while she he's like, eating her alive, is going to kill Orpheus. But, she makes it so that, like, when you do a spell, there is usually some kind of sacrifice. That's why the protection spell that the humans are sacrifices for, all this stuff, um, why they use a drop of their blood to do it, because it takes some kind of sacrifice. So her... Sac like, she makes it so he uses the sacrifice of her blood from being literally stabbed in the back, dripping blood onto his hand as he's holding her. Uh, makes it so he makes a protection spell so that he can't be killed by Demon King. Um, she is dying and she gives Orpheus her soul uh, and says she loves him and then dies. What the fuck? Okay, my notes on this 100 pages. Um, Rhea faked him blaming Katarina, like, she's the worst, but that doesn't negate her experience. Love that. Um, I'm so done and wish I DNF'd. Still believe that. Um, the giving her soul scene reminded me of Beauty the Beast when he becomes human, you know, that whole scene. Um, it was so obvious who the Demon King and Katarina were, but it takes her a long time to figure out. Like, it's like 30 pages of her just like not knowing who these people are and I'm like they're the demon king and Katarina the ex and they're like yeah we're the demon king and Katarina the ex and she's like oh <laughs> um also I'd like you to know the witch owl is the best character and I will die on this hill and I will still die on this hill after finishing this book and knowing some stuff about her some witch owl lore I still die on this hill um so <laughs> this is the fun part so she dies um she gets the infinity war treatment um I know you haven't seen Marvel movies, so I'm just going to inform you that means she gets dusted. She's turned to dust in his arms. Um, distraught, Orpheus rips off the Demon King's arm before he pearls Orpheus home, um, so that Orpheus can't kill him. Uh, Orpheus goes on a rampage looking for Rhea, uh, like, literally destroying everything in the house, all this stuff. Um, and now she's a phantom and can turn solid and unsolid whenever she wants, and she's tethered to Orpheus due to giving him her soul. <sighs> I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense now. Um, so, um, he's running around trying to find her, and she's, like, low-key playing games with him, uh, which feels rude. Like, she's saying his name, and he's like, Rhea, and tries to find her, and, like, he can somewhat hear her, and, like, go searching for her, and all this stuff, and she's just constantly saying his name, which, like, is, like, he's all like, Rhea, and then destroys something else. I'm like, dude, he's going through it. Um, 
eventually, uh, she does get his attention long enough to be like, hey, I can turn solid. This is a thing. Um, and then they bang. And then they bang again. Um, oh, and she inserts her head into him. You know how it has that slit on, in, in the middle? She puts her head yeah. in there. And she's the one on top of this time. Very important. Uh-huh. Um, afterwards, while he's sleeping, she goes outside, um, and there's a witch owl in a tree. Um, and she learns, uh, from the witch owl that she is also a phantom, and also the mother of all duskwalkers. Whee! With the, with the darkness. She had, she banged the darkness and created duskwalkers. Since Raya is now a phantom, she can get pregnant, and they just banged twice while she was a phantom, so she may be pregnant. What the fuck? Um, she lives a half the after it with Orpheus. Um, in the epilogue, he's on the way to her village to, like, kill the human who threw things at her, uh, causing her ear scar, whose name is Chad. Um, and she's, like, just floating above him. Um, because now he can, like, leave whenever and not have to worry about her, because, like, she can just turn into a not physical thing, and so she can't be harmed. Um, and anything, and she can just float behind him and whatnot. Um, and so he's like, I'm gonna go kill him. Uh, especially this one guy. And she just laughs. Um. I. <laughs> okay, my thoughts, and then, well, I'll do the last two highlights, and then I'll do my thoughts. Um, but I would like you to know one thought, which was, um, I was laughing when she died. I literally laughed. I, you know, at this point, um, I don't know if I blame you. Uh, oh yeah, witch owl time, so, um, the lore with the witch owl stuff, um, and I quote, I was once, oh, I once was human, and cough, cough, but now I am like you, she lifted her hand to cup her shin, I gave my soul to the void in, or- in return for eternal life and magic, and in mating with him, I gave birth to Orpheus's kind. Good times. Um, and then the last one is the witch owl pointed to Raya's stomach. I would be careful of your wound if you do not seek to give birth to darkness. Yay! Um, anyways, final thoughts. I gave it two stars. I will not continue this series. Uh, it took me six days to read this over 500 page book. Um, and then also after, right after I read it, I went and read Gay Pirates, um, to have a good time, which is code for in Deeper Waters. Uh, one of my favorite books of all time. I read that book and I went and I read and read a comfy favorite read because I was like, I can't anymore. This book destroyed me. Um, it was a good time. It was an experience. Aren't you so glad you got to experience this too through me? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, Do you have any questions? I I I I don't think I'm here anymore, Bestie. Uh, <laughs> Did you leave around the demon deck part? Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Understandable. I wish I could leave around that part too. I told I, you it was a wild uh, ride. I did tell you. I'm so glad I DNF'd this book. Um, I wish I had DNF'd it. I wish you would have DNF'd it too. Um, Me too, because then we would have had that as an episode. Which I, I think is close to two hours. Right, right. In my defense, it's over 500 pages long. And I left out some stuff too. I'm so glad you did. <laughs> I left out most of the time. I'm not gonna lie, I'm watching before. reels. I thought they, I thought this was cheesy. I mean, no, this bitch just cut a slab of, cut a, they're eating butter and honey and salt. I, I thought it was cheese. No, it's what? butter. I, I, I Bella, here, help. you may see it. Like, I straight up thought that was a little block of cheese. No. There's literally just a chunk of butter with honey and sea salt on it. That. How's that nutrient dense? 
It's not. That's, that's, I. I feel my blood curdling looking at it. Real. <laughs> like what the hell? I don't have bitches eating like that. Like the carnivore diet. Carnivore diet. Like my body would shut down. Like. Mine too. Alright, um, do you have any thoughts about this book? Uh, yes and no. That's, that's, that goes to the thoughts. The thoughts are yes and no. No! <laughs> yes, period, no, period. That's all. I love that for you. Um, okay, for everyone listening, uh, the next episode is literally coming out the day after my birthday. I love that for me. And it is the third Ice Planet Barbarian. Which is my favorite one of the three that I have read. And I will never read another one. Um, so stay tuned for that. It's a good time. Um, but yeah. We will probably be filming that sometime around my birthday. And I love that for me. Okay. I love you want to do it after I show you the movie. My favorite movie. One of my favorite movies of all time. So that I can also get your reaction to the movie. Uh-huh. Technically, it is based off of a short story. So technically, it's it's a thing for a book podcast that we could talk about. I'm, I'm kidding. We don't have to do that. <laughs> we talked about for three oh, minutes. It's fantasy <laughs> wild. Um, it's a great movie. I love it. Um, but yes, Ice Planet Barbarian Story coming up next week, the fifth. This woman oh. woman keeps coming up in my real like edits <laughs> and stuff. Like I'm just like, hello. But like, why are you here? But like, hello. <laughs> I don't know who you are, not really, but like, hello? Hello? Um, I'm still eating my dinner. It's been like, at least 45 minutes. Yeah, I've just checked out. Room. I'm quite literally just watching reels silently. My dog's trying to read the that I dropped from the ground underneath the desk. Hi, Bella. You're a cutie. Anyways, I'm going to close this word document of my notes and die happy knowing that I never have to look at these again. But I will have to edit this episode tonight. I'm so not excited. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, I guess that's my final thoughts. So until next week.